Hello everyone and welcome back to another instalment of our Portuguese barn conversion series. I'm just laughing because some of you guys seem to like to comment on my hair. The reason my hair gets so long is because I've got other stuff to do and building a house. <laughs> but you'd be happy to see my hair is now cut. B has trimmed it and she's done a good job. I wouldn't really just call it a trim, it was a whole shave. Like I look like an egg so I'm not going to take my hat <laughs> off. And I've cut a fringe. I felt jealous of him getting a new haircut, so I joined in, but anyway. Enough about our appearances, they really do not matter. <laughs> We've got lots of building to get on with. We have. <laughs> and you're going to enjoy this video because we get quite a few things achieved. We're the Indie Project, B and Theo, and we've been living and travelling the world in vans for the past six years. We're currently renovating an abandoned stone barn in Portugal to turn into a beautiful tiny home for us and our cats, Gingy Bear and Fernando. Follow our journey from the very beginning as we document the whole process of creating an off-grid home. Good morning guys, welcome back to another video here in sunny Portugal, it's absolutely stunning. A little bit windy, so it's quite chilly in the mornings, but by midday it's gonna warm up and I'll be in a t-shirt, no doubt. And today we are gonna crack on with some really good projects that are gonna push us forwards. You know when you're feeling really productive and you just wanna start work and you generate a dyes? Oh, That's fuel. just happened. <laughs> it's not mechanically dyed, it's just run out of fuel and we've got no spare fuel left. So it's really annoying. I've got to go to the fuel station now, which is a good probably 30 minute round trip to pick up fuel, come back, fill it up, and then we can start. But while I'm gone, I'm sure B will get some preparation done. Of course. <laughs> So whilst Theo's gone, yes, I've got a fringe. I think this is the first time I've actually shown my fringe on the vlog, so I just thought I'd get that out there, you know. Just, oh, new hair. Yes, yeah, me. Um, anyway, <laughs> the whole reason we need the generator today is we've actually got two exciting tasks that we're doing that have both been on our list of things to do for a while, and I'm very excited about doing them. Number one is I need the light inside the barn. Because we don't have the windows fitted yet, it can be a bit dark in there. So we need the light in there because I'm finally going to be slapping on insecticide on the mezzanine beams. Now, if you weren't here when we got the roof installed, we've already sprayed the entire roof. All of that timber is covered in insecticide, so nothing can move in and ruin our wood. Now, the mezzanine beams haven't been treated. They've been covered up basically since they were in there. And if you saw our last video, we started sanding them ready for the insecticide. Now, I've done one coat. It's been over 24 hours and I'm about to do the second coat, but I need a light. This right here is what we're going to be using. It's both a preventative and a cure for loads of different types of things that will try and destroy the wood in your house. I'm also probably seeing in chicken crap that it's nice and comfy on the floor. The second thing we need to use a generator for, because I didn't actually say, is cutting a heck load of tiles and I'm gonna leave it that you can have to wait and see why we're cutting more tiles and what they're for. We also picked up these pretty cool pieces from the scrapyard yesterday that we're gonna be using for plant pots and decorative pieces outside the barn. And right here, <laughs> right here I've got everything prepped and ready to go for the painting. You do need to wear protection because this paint is really nasty stuff. So always wear a mask, gloves, I do it with a brush because it goes on really well with that. Unfortunately, you can't dip the brush right in, so it has to be poured into a little container, which is good because it means you don't use more than you need. And as soon as Theo's here with the Jenny, get the light on and get to work. I will not be making that mistake again. I got the fuel, but it took 40 minutes 
40 minutes out of the day and by the time I've actually filled up the generator, got everything in place, that's an hour out of your day and usually I have a spare backup one but for some reason I just didn't refill it so I need to add that to the list, go back, get another one so when we run out, next time I don't have to go all the way out just to pick up some fuel, it's just a waste of the day and it's such a good day it's going to rain tomorrow, so we want to make the most of our time. Can you hear the birds? Yeah, the birds are beautiful. <laughs> They're going crazy. I can't actually see I them. I can't see them. It feels like <laughs> someone's just playing like a bird track in my ear. <laughs> Stones we carry, clothes we lived in, all the tales we will tell our children. Oh, we're taking the high road. Lay beside me, wake the morning, ever after, day reborn in no. One of the great things about this insecticide that we found is it spreads a long way. It's quite expensive stuff, so you want it to go as far as possible. When I was using it in a spray bottle, obviously it doesn't go as far because you haven't got as much control. But when you're using a brush, you can really stretch it out. And the good thing about it is it impregnates the wood. It doesn't just sit on the surface, it seeps deep into the wood. So any bugs that try and get in there won't want to but also if you need to sand some beams down like we do at a later date just to get the surface off, it's fine because it's seeped into the wood. It's not just sitting on the surface. I'd like to take a moment to just say a massive thank you to Squarespace who have sponsored today's video. Now, if you don't know what Squarespace is, it's a fantastic online platform for you to build and design your very own website. I personally love Squarespace because you do not need to have any experience whatsoever with web design, which can be quite daunting for quite a lot of people, myself included. We've had our website with Squarespace for a good number of years now, and it's a really great place for us to have loads of our stuff in one area. I love having a blog on there we have our social media accounts all on there you can see our instagram images links to our videos and stuff which is really fantastic because some people don't know that we'll have an instagram or a youtube so it's a really great place for us to have everything in one the analytics are also one of my favorite features to browse seeing where people from all over the world have been on our website always gets me pretty excited because i'm a little bit of an analytics geek now if you'd like to try out Squarespace, head to the link in our description or go to squarespace.com forward slash indie project for a free trial and 10% off your first purchase of a website or a domain. I really hope that you enjoy Squarespace as much as me and do make sure you get the most out of your free trial. What did I say? Come lunchtime and I'm in a t-shirt. It's warmed up a lot even though the sun's just gone behind a cloud. But we're ready to do the last bit of tiling. I cannot <laughs> wait to finish this roof. You do not understand how much this has been on my mind for a long time. And we've just got one row of tiles to go all the way up the gable. They're just finisher ones, aren't they? They are. They're, they're not like a full tile. It's basically just been cut down 
so it's just the curve and what this will do is just give it a nice finish on the side of the barn and just make it look really pretty. So I'm using a little bit of lime just to keep these tiles down because the way tiles work is usually they have a tile overlapping the other tile which keeps that tile down and they all kind of work together whereas this is just an end tile it's got nothing to support it so a little bit of lime underneath just to make sure that it doesn't fly off in any high winds and it's working really well it's way quicker than I imagined it was going to be I reckon in the next half an hour I'm going to be at the top, the which is cool. The finishing edge looks really good oh, as well. It, it makes it, it makes it so much better, and this is what I'm all about, and B as well. It's all about like them little touches, and all the little touches throughout the build create this like they add up to make yeah, a big touch. They do. <laughs> they, it just makes it kind of you know like when you glance at the building, you're like, oh, that's nice. And I walked down just to have a quick look at how it's looking and it looks so much better than the flat edge so mm. yeah I'm excited. The good thing about this stuff is it's all over the tiles that's not the good thing. <laughs> the good thing is when it's all dry I can come up with a stiff brush and brush it all down and get all this uh, it's just like yeah lime residue it's like really like I don't know powdery let's see so I like, you can't really tell but yeah you can see like smears but yeah, stiff brush. I'm gonna do the whole roof because it's annoying me a little bit. Really? Wow. <laughs> the first one to go on that actually goes over the wall is finally on and it looks so good. <laughs> it's gonna hide that top layer of uh, lime so it looks like it's all stone to the top and it looks so nice. Just a nice finishing touch. So here we have, I thought I'd do a before and after. This is the before, as you can see, zero curve. It just totally flat to the wall and I can't wait to show you the after. I can't tell you how excited I am. B just showed you the shot of it half done and the wall section is not complete. And just as I got to the wall section, I ran out of tiles. So I've got some more tiles knocking about. I'm gonna cut them right down there which means I'm gonna get rid of this flat bit. And I tell you what, in 20 minutes, it's gonna be complete. Oh my gosh, I'm gonna put a timer on. How does that look? Theo's finished all of the tiles, it looks fantastic. We've just got the final ridge tile to put on which actually needs to be cut and I need to fasten down the breathable membrane so I'm going to be doing that now. I'm not going to lie, I'm very stoked with how it looks. It has exceeded my expectations. I thought it was going to look good but it looks so much better than I thought. It just finishes the whole building off. And I know there's one last little bit to do and that's the ridge tile. That needs cutting down a little bit shorter and I can't do that because I'm missing a drill bit and some screws. You need a certain type of screw to go through the tile and I don't have that to hand. So as soon as I do get that, I'm gonna go to the city, pick that up probably in the next few days and I can finish that off and move on to something else. 
And as promised, here's the after. It just finishes it off so nicely. And I can't wait to point the whole wall so the top matches the bottom. But you can see how the tiles curve over the edge of the roof and just blend it into the wall really nicely. So as predicted by the weather forecast is rainy, grey and it feels about minus 25. It's very cold. It's freezing cold. <laughs> I should have a jumper on under here. But there's something we wanted to show you and talk about because we get this question an awful lot in every single video. Every single video. We need some light so I'm going to have to set up the Jenny because it's very dark in the barn and a lot of you guys tell us it's going to be a cave <laughs> you don't want to live in a cave it's going to be really dark and it is really dark at the moment but this is what we're going to talk to you about need to wait and see take this window off So we've had a lot of people in the comments who are really concerned that we're going to end up living in this beautiful stone house without any natural light and that's not the case at all. We planned quite a lot forwards. Before we started this project we had everything mapped out and all of our ideas written down and drawings drawn up. So we have everything in place and we know exactly where our windows are going to go but it gets very hot here in the summer. It's really important to pick which side of the building you have windows, where you put them, how big they are, and in the summer, otherwise you're gonna turn your house into a greenhouse, and that's not what you want. Here, the walls are over half a meter thick in stone to really try and insulate the building keep it cool in the day and they do a really good job we came in here in the summer before and they did an amazing job at keeping it cool and that was before the roof was even insulated that was before the roof was insulated now we've got 60 uh, millimeters of cork insulation on the roof which is going to do a really good job we're also going to insulate the floor the walls some of them are going to be lime plastered which also gives a little bit of insulation properties as well so the first two windows that are probably going to be installed in this building are one up here. This is going to be a Velux window. We've already brought these windows, so there's one there and there's one up there. That's going to add a really nice natural light onto our mezzanine area. And That's this where we're going to sleep. the side where the sun comes through. Yes. So this side behind you guys. In front of me, this is south facing where the front of our building is. So we don't really want huge great windows there. But what we have done to counter that is we've added a veranda off the front of the building. And that's to stop any of the south facing light hitting the front wall and heating up this building. Because what stone does is it heats up throughout the, the day. Keeps it cool in the day, but at night it releases that heat. But I'm really excited to add these windows in. They're not massive, but they're big enough to allow lots of natural light into the building. It's only a small building and also keep it at a nice temperature. It's also great for ventilation. But they're not the only windows. They're not the only windows. So here's our third window that we're going to be installing. And as you can see, it's really sizable window and it's, it's going to be a really nice fit. No, you that's can just a joke. For it. That is a joke. <laughs> Now this that's a hole in the wall i need to fill that in now this is our third window so we've got the two velux in the roof and then we've got this and this is actually where my kitchen's going to be and i say my kitchen because you're never going to use it <laughs> yeah so the kitchen will wrap around here uh kind of like an l-shaped kitchen it's going to be beautiful 
but this window is just really nice. It really reminds me of a castle window. You'd shoot your bow and arrow out of there. So we're gonna have a nice little window through there and that's just gonna add, surprisingly, the amount of light that comes through that tiny little window is really surprising. And the through breeze. And a nice through breeze as well. When so the door's open. It's a really good asset to have that in the building. Oh, perfect timing. The rain has come. <coughs> Ready? Yeah, one-handed filming whilst holding a full <laughs> generator. And this right here is the final window. We're going to basically replace this beautiful door that we're actually going to keep as a cover for when we're not here. But we're going to replace it with a gigantic glass door. And I know you're probably thinking, but didn't you just say that glass is a really bad idea? This is the veranda. No sun gets on here at all. So it's the perfect place to have a glass door and it's gonna act as a brilliant window for us when we're sitting on our sofa to look outside and also let in natural light, but no sunlight. So it's gonna be perfect. And we're currently trying to find someone who can make it for us. We did actually have a quote from a company, but it was 2000 euros, so quite a lot. And we were a little bit, yeah, that's a lot for a door, I'm sure. I've never bought a door, but I feel like that is a lot. So we're just trying to find one. We've had a lot of people talk about the patina on this door and how much they like it. So if anyone wants to give us two grand <laughs> to buy this door, no. we'll swap you for the, for the nice new it's door. It's I could never get rid of this. <laughs> priceless. Pri it is priceless. But you can imagine this door is massive. Check it. It's 1.1 five meters wide by two meters tall yeah that's a big door really big you can see the size of it so we're gonna have a lovely wooden frame and then all glass double glazed it's gonna be beautiful oh and in case people are wondering privacy wise whatever i am also on the inside gonna have like a curtain that goes across privacy and, there's no one here yeah but i'm just saying it's for some people but people will wonder about that trust <laughs> me because i'm someone who is funny like that so you get, you're basically gonna have blinds so that we can block out the chickens yeah because they <laughs> like to look in and i think that's very rude there's no one here <laughs> Having a big glass window as your front door isn't the best security wise, but we have a plan for that. We're probably gonna repurpose that lovely door I just showed you that's on the front door at the moment. And we're probably gonna use that as some sort of lockable shutter. So when we go away, we can have that mounted over the front of the glass. No one will be able to get through that. And just to show you guys, we already got one of the windows out. Is here in the back of our van. In the van. <laughs> Here's our lovely Velux windows. It was the smallest, pretty much, that you could get, but it'll let in such a lovely amount of light. Look how nice that looks. Beautiful wooden finish, should go really nice with the chestnut. And this right here is an awning blind that we've got that will be going on the outside of the window that basically reduces the amount of light that comes through but still allows sunlight through so that'll be really handy. And we of course got the uh, traditional Velux blinds that go on the inside as well. They're hidden away somewhere in the horse box so I can't show you them unfortunately. We went for really nice neutral tones so I'm really excited to install them. I've always been obsessed with having Velux windows. I am a weirdo, I'm not going to deny it. <laughs> so I can't wait for them to finally be fitted in the barn. And with that, that signals the end of today's video. Thank you so much for joining us. I really hope you've enjoyed our work on the barn this week and we will see you on the next video.